Hello everyone, my name is Mecha and you're watching chapter 22 of my Fire Emblem 3 CS 776 Iron Man playthrough chapter 22 as I literally just said This is this is the size map. This is what a lot of you are probably excited for Across the river I didn't skip that one, that's what the game did. So if you couldn't catch the text, it's not my fault. Look at this massive, massive map. I wonder if I'm gonna play it the hard way. <laughs> okay, so here's the preps, or the preps I did. Uh, we're gonna bring a massive 16 units, even though like half of them we're not gonna do anything. Leaf, Laura, Sloof, Tina, Lanoan, Sarah, Glade, Orson, Xavier, Amelda, Marita, Ralph, Olwen, Selfina, Roberts, and Marty. So let's see what they have to say about this chapter. Exposition. So glitchy. Not as bad as I remember, though. It's actually him. It's the main character of Thracia. Which in a way is correct because Julius is like invincible at this point. I wonder if they still say this if Olin's dead. Anyway, all this conversation is like really fitting for Reinhardt's character. There's a couple of people on the sub, I think I've talked on this before, that have done a really good analysis of Reinhardt and the people he's related to in some way, like Ishtar, Sias, uh, Manfroy, I guess, Julius. He's not as mighty as Hero seems to imply he is. Well, that's because you're a cynical douchebag. But also, he's right. I think this guy's name was King Kalf, father of Kuan, and of course, the grandfather of Leith. And Connort, I believe, was led by Raedric.
Okay, so all these battle, pre-battle things have given us plenty of reasons to be scared. And for good reason. So I guess I'll go for the million bosses that we have. So, um, this is Cohen. He has like four different threatening things, well three. Restore Staff is not very threatening, but Blizzard puts you to sleep, Berserk, makes someone Berserk and like kill other people. And uh, Master Lens, well we all know what Master Lenses do. So pretty annoying, but there is a little exploit. Well, I don't really want to call it an exploit, but like a little thing they over they didn't see coming, I think, that you can do to trivialize him. Uh, right beneath him is Sias. Uh, this patch calls him... I don't know if you'd still pronounce it Sias. Uh, I think I do. I kind of like the pronunciation anyway. So uh, just like last time, he has like 10 leadership stars. So everyone on the map is like super strong. Uh, I'm kind of hard. It's kind of hard reading these properly, but I think this guy has like 58 avoid for instance, even though he has like zero AS. That's because of all the leadership stars. Because Cohen has four, and then this guy has 10. Uh, Sias is also invincible on this map, but um, he's not a bad guy, and you can't actually like you can't kill him. So obviously he's gonna appear later again. Uh, he's not too strong, but you don't really have to fight him. And of course, there's uh, this guy. I think everyone knows who he is by now. So this is Reinhardt. Uh, it's kind of a weird way of spelling it, uh, but it's better than Reinhardt at least. And he is really freaking strong. He has two brave weapons, the Dime Thunder and the Master Lance, or the Master Sword. Both of them hit twice. He's pretty much never gonna miss. His stats are redunculous. He can heal himself with a Vulnerary. Oh boy, he has five leadership stars, five movement stars. So if you survive one encounter on enemy phase, he might just attack you again. And yeah, speaking of attacking you again, he also has Adept, Ambush, uh, Charge or Duel, and of course, <laughs> Shield or Great Shield. So you can never be too sure what's going to happen when you fight Reinhardt, but generally, he's, uh, if you try to attack him, he will kill you. And if you try to defend against him, he might also kill you. Hmm. So that doesn't really sound like the kind of guy we want to fight in an Iron Man, does it? Now, thankfully, we do have some mightier tools at our hands, namely the Warp Staff, and I'm gonna make full use of them. That might sound a bit disappointing if you were hoping for me to fight on all these freaking enemies, like all these freaking dudes with all those leadership stars intact, but I'm not. Like, this is an Iron Man playthrough. I'm gonna do what it takes to survive with as many people, people as possible. I've had too many casualties already to just risk my entire army, because that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. Like, uh, these guys are not too threatening. For example, they have Kettle Lance, but. Um, I don't know, like there's ballistas everywhere that can catch me off guard. There's, um, like what else is there? These guys have bolting tomes. Uh, there's ballistas on like random islands and shit, like right here. It's too much of a pain. Promoted enemies that have like insane hit rates, killer bows as well. I don't want to risk my army. And this, this army is also pretty annoying because they all, the two or three shot most of my army with very accurate one two range. I have no reason to fight all these people if I can avoid it. And I can very much avoid it if I play my cards right. So, um, as you might have seen, I left off two of my high end staff users to give them some rest and hopefully save myself enough S strings to where I can beat the game. Uh, Salem and Safi are taking a chill, but I do have a Noan, Sarah, Tina, a Sloof, and a Dancer available, and that should be enough to beat this chapter in theory, alright? So, uh, first, I want to, first thing I want to do is scare off Sias, and you can do that by um, doing what I'm about to do, which is basically getting into a square that's roughly around here, this area. When you get too close, he uh, Cohen tells him to screw off, but only at the end of uh, the turn afterwards, so you still have to get that unit out of here. You kind of beat the game on the same turn. And the other reason I want to scare off Sias is because I want to get someone in this square to uh, get rid of Cohen for me. So I'll just show you instead of talking. Um, Let's see, who's the first warper again? I don't think it matters per se, but the person who scares him off can be almost anyone. I'm gonna use Orson. Because Sias cannot kill him. And Orson, usually he specializes in killing people, but in this case, he literally cannot. Like, Sias has that invisibility rig. Let's see what level ups Sarah gets. I was hoping for HP actually, but if I was hoping for HP, I should probably have given her a scroll of some kind. I only have like three scrolls left though. And I wanted one of them to be on Orson in case Sia's got like a cheesy critical or something. So we use a hand axe because it doesn't matter what we use. As you can see, I have 24 hit, which is not very high. Um, but you know, at least I don't get double. I don't think it can crit me either, but that might just be, yeah, that's a scroll preventing it. Yeah, well, that's a weird way of wording it because he, like, he's also no match for me. But the important part is... 
that we survive. Okay, so Science, as you can see, doesn't leave right away. Thankfully, he doesn't have like a death or something, he just has Nihil. So now we gotta get Orson out, and that's what Lanone is for. She has B staves, so not enough to get warp, but enough to do other useful things. So we'll get Orson out of there. We don't have to heal him, because he uh, doesn't need to fight anymore. And that's pretty much all the important stuff we need to do. Oh, go Aka. Magic and speed on Lanone. And she got her A staffs, which I also factored in. So now we'll move Marita and promote her, because I've been meaning to do that. And I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of opportunities to give her more EXP. So I'll just take the stat boosts and the slight movement increase as well. And I use her the way she is. She hasn't been too helpful so far, but I need all the help I can get for the last chapter or two. So we might as well get her promoted. And Swordmaster actually has 7 moves, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, she can get this house. It's not relevant, it's like a, it's like a holy water, but whatever. And now what I want to do is I want to use Tina, because, uh, you know, I made a big deal out of her fatigue and the fact that she needed to not be fatigued this chapter, so I gave her an S drink, because I need her to steal something. And she needed the magic up and the magic ring, I think, and we're gonna take the Master Lance, because we hate Master Weapons. And I think I have a total of three shots plus whatever she gets from movement stars. So if she misses, no big deal. Just don't miss like three times. But I think she got it first try, so that's good. And everything else can wait. Um, there are two houses I need to visit that I need to use a warp for, but I don't have to do it this turn. So now I just wait. And we'll see what happens, right? I think that's all. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, so this is what happens when you like, uh, I think it's when you cross the bridge, that's like a huge area. So now you're trapped between the water and Reinhardt's army. And this is the conversation that triggers when, uh, well, when what I just did happens. I'm not sure if I had to attack Saez, come to think of it, because it's like area based. But I do think I had to like end my turn in that square. So Cohen warps him away, even though he doesn't have a warp, doesn't have a warp staff. Apparently, all bosses in this game are cheaters. I think the mage knights are supposed to move towards you, but since there's no person of mine that they can reach, they just kind of do it. And one of my guys gets berserked, but thankfully they go for Ralph. I don't think he could have statused any of my important units, but I did bring. A restore staff just in case that happens. I think Ralph got preserved because he has the highest HP. He's tight with Xavier actually. Okay, so now if I had to, I could use Thief again. But since I got the Master Lance, what I can do now is I can use Warp again to warp a mounted unit like Glade, who is normally pretty useless at fighting. But I thought I'd give him the honor. And we'll capture Cohen, because at this point Cohen doesn't have a one range weapon anymore, all he has is the long range tome, and when all you have is a long range tome, uh, you can be instant captured, so Glade's stats don't actually matter. Oof, there we go. Adana did this with Dean, and the reason I can't do it is because there's no square that my units can go on, other than the square where Saez was, so I had to scare off Saez. And I can't capture a two range, so I can't go here, and I didn't want to fight the boss, because it would be way too unreliable, especially if Saez is still on the field. Uh, next thing is we need to get those villages, because one of them has a warp staff, and the other one has... Uh, see, can I trade with Orson? Yeah, I can, because he's, you know, berserked. <laughs> he's not berserked, actually. So, I think I'll give this next warp to Sarah, so I can get that Hazel scroll. I think I'll warp the leaf next, actually. So, take the Hazel scroll. And warp leaf. So I gotta do him in the end anyway. please. Thank god. Alright, that's all I needed. Oh, cool. Hmm. Not sure if I need to make use of this. 
Let's see, originally, I'm gonna pick one of these that I'm not gonna field next chapter. Um, if Sarah warps again, she's at 15 fatigue. Yeah, I can do that. I can have Sarah warp two people so that she ends up at like 20 fatigue. Then she's at 16. Or I can have her at 21 and Sarah at 15. Uh, it's kind of hard to think of what's better right now. Either way, I need to do two more warps. I think... I don't think Lara's fatigue is going to be an issue anymore. I'm just trying to think if this is relevant. It sounds like a dumb thing to nitpick over. I'll just get this village in the meantime. I'll save state in case it like glitches up the, the, gate, the place or something. The patch is getting very glitchy. Yeah, good point, old man. I did lose a holy water with Parn, so it's okay to have one back, I guess. This one's free of opportunity cost. I think I'll give it to Lil No one. And then I'll give the other one to Sleuth. Sleuth has his own warp staff, right? Yes. Let's see, is Lil No one gonna level up from this? Uh, maybe. I didn't keep track of how much XP she gets, so we need to trade for the Hazel Scroll. And I'll warp whoever. Whoever, whenever. I guess we'll do Xavier. And we want to go to this house. I think this is the warp house. Okay, they're close enough, I guess. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll, I'll keep it in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he has two scrolls. You dirty man. You dirty old man. I think I might have made a slight mistake by not checking Leaf's inventory. If it's really full, he doesn't have enough space for all of Cohen's stuff. Let me check. Um, he might have to drop his iron sword or something. No big deal. So we'll visit this one as well. Why are both of these people talking about a fast Thracian river? Well, I'll keep it in mind. Thank you. And that's pretty much this chapter in a nutshell. This is how you trivialize it. I could just not trivialize it. Maybe I'll make a save state and, you know, play it quote-unquote normally, but I'm not playing it like this in Iron Man setting. So I'm gonna save state in case something goes wrong with the dialogue and we'll take this guy's stuff. Uh, you can have my, uh, my Iron Sword, it's fine. Okay, so seize, and that's it. That's so that sound, that probably looked really easy, but I was afraid of screwing up somewhere, so <laughs> we made it across. Good job, August. <laughs> no, you don't. Alright, thanks for watching, and next chapter will be chapter 23, which is when this game merges with FE4, so if you played FE4, you might recognize some parts of it. Maybe. See you then.